Good morning, everybody. I'm grateful that I'm in your midst, and I'm grateful for your ear. For um, we need each other, and uh, more than ever, so to say. And rightly mentioned by you, broadband is engagement, and we are talking about engagement, not only this audience and the panel, but all over the world, so to say. And I was even more aware of that, of that engagement, and that it is a global theme what we have to tackle in this uh, sector. Uh, when I was Skyping with my granddaughter, and my granddaughter is five years old, she has an American passport, and she's living in San Francisco, and we are Skyping on Sunday. And a couple of weeks ago, she was just looking at me and asking me, how old are you, Nene? And I said, well, I'm 71. And she said, out of her heart, and you are still alive? <laughs> um, and that means that I couldn't think of a better stimulant for I need to use my time. And need to use my time, and I'm planning to be much older than what I'm at the moment, but just taking our responsibility, and that is what I would to share and want to share with you. If we are taking our responsibility, wherever you are, whatever your responsibility is, but if we are joining and sharing, then it makes sense. Then it makes sense for all those, and the numbers were mentioned, that indeed are not yet the privileged ones. And when I took, uh, would take over, when I took over this portfolio after a very, uh, very inspiring portfolio before, after competition policy, getting the digital agenda, some people, when I was walking in my hometown, were saying, congratulations that you are getting a new term in the commission, but poor you with this portfolio. And I said, wait and see. This portfolio, by the way, is more important for people than competition policy. And don't make a wrong decision and a judgment that I'm not anymore involved in competition policy. I am, but this is close to people. This is making a difference in people's lifestyle. And yes, indeed, women in that case, girls in that case, for they, in most cases, are the ones who are taking care of the small and the youngsters. So we have to fill, it, fill in our time. And we have to be aware that time is not our friend in this. For I am always thinking, if I'm meeting someone who hasn't joined yet those privileged uh, opportunities, what would my answer be if those people are saying, why not me? And that line, why not me, is in our hands. So we could do much more than we are doing already. And that means sometimes a bit extra. It reminds me how we need to act in Europe. And normally spoken, people are not um, talking about me as being a very modest person. Uh, I can assure you that uh, I learned how to behave, but modest indeed is not uh, the part of my personality that is uh, central. Why not? Because I think human beings do have not only an opportunity, but also have a responsibility to use the responsibility for not only themselves or for their circle of friends and acquaintances, but doing what has to be done. And in this case, in my responsibility is talking about Europe. And indeed, also in Europe, and Michael knows it quite well, for we discuss it quite often, that in Europe, 28 member states, the European family since yesterday, that 28 members of the family indeed are still facing reality in certain um, issues, and that is that not everybody is enjoying um, the internet. And talking about certain member states, if a percentage of 40% in certain member states still haven't yet joined internet once in their life, then we have to face something. And of course, that discussion can be held. Is it because people are scared? And by the way, it doesn't help 
what the last couple of weeks was published for people who are saying, my goodness, I will be very scared to go on the internet. So we have to do our utmost talking about cybersecurity to give them a good feeling and not only give them a good feeling, but being aware that it is a good feeling. And sometimes it is knowledge, not knowing what's in for them. And rightly mentioned by one of the uh, panels of members of the panel, that it is talking about an aging population in Europe where we have to use ICT, where we have to use the technology to give them a decent part of their life where they can be independent and still have the feeling that uh, there is taken care of them. Having said that, a lot to do. We have to act strategically with an eye not to yesterday's powers. And that is my main issue. If we are continuing what we were doing yesterday or what we were doing this morning, then we are making a big mistake. We should just look forward. We should take into account that the future economy is different from what we were used to and what we are uh, used to in the way how we did fulfill our economic processes and procedures. It is about taking all those opportunities and that is on one hand fun, on one hand sexy, but on the other hand it's difficult. There are a lot of challenges, risks and what have you, but never ever give up and that is talking about tomorrow's opportunities. We need each other. That is my line that I want you to take home. We need each other and no one is able to do it himself or herself. Truly thinking European, and again, a bit modest, so to say, to deliver the single market jackpot at home and be heard by international partners abroad. And what I got, here are the three topics. Tackling unemployment. If someone is asking me, what is your biggest worry at the moment in Europe? It is youth unemployment. In certain member states, nearby 60% of youngsters that don't have a job, it is unacceptable. And it's unacceptable for more than one reason. For you are talking about a lost generation if we are not acting quickly. You are talking about a lost generation that does have the feeling, and rightly so under the circumstances of today, that it doesn't make sense to think of starting a family or starting to look at an apartment or whatever. No job is really fundamental in someone's being on this earth. So talking about tackling unemployment, it's main. And I'm always saying when I'm, share, uh, when I'm joining a commission's meeting with the 28 uh, commissioners, uh, 27 and the president, that I have the instrument in hands where we can make a difference. For it is in ICT, it is in the digital development that we can make a difference. And focusing, your second point, focusing policies on humans, I couldn't agree more. It is about humans. We are not doing something in politics just for fun or whatever. It is just making a difference for human beings. And, by the way, that is also an important part. It is your third part, regulators as partners in innovation. And if you allow me to add one sentence, not only in innovation, but also in growth. Regulators should take the responsibility to look forward and to look for the future economy and to indeed get that innovative part in their mindset, but also being aware that growth is connected with jobs and that growth is giving more opportunities for having that more uh, available uh, circumstances. Very relevant, so to say. And the three, absolutely um, great. I want to take today's opportunity to talk about what those ideas mean and why they are important to our plans to build a connected continent in Europe. Well, I don't make uh, a lot of news if I'm saying that our economic situation in Europe remains worrying. 
very worrying. Unemployment, and I just mentioned in certain member states, nearby 60% youth unemployment, it is unacceptable. So at the same time, we have that huge opportunity. Our world is changing, it's going digital. And it's not a matter if you are in favor, yes or no. It is a fact, so to say. And especially talking about telecommunications, it is going digital. Those services are increasingly not about voice calls or text, uh, text messages, but an area of services based on data, unlimited area of data. From video conferences, 3D printing, they are all based on network, the internet network, that inherently global, that doesn't need to respect distances or national borders. So borders are, with this technology, gone. And we have an increasingly integrated single market in Europe, one where businesses operate across multiple sites and multiple countries. And with the right connectivity, we can capitalize that. We can capitalize on those chances. And that is the positive part. So that is giving me even more fighting spirit. But to do so, and I'm addressing you, and especially the Europeans, uh, the ones who are uh, the, the European regulators, regulation must adapt and must respond. And Europe was once the home of huge telecoms innovation. It was, by the way, not that long ago. It was in the 90s, in the last century, that sounds a long time ago, but the 90s in itself, it's just around the corner. And we did make a big effort, so to say. We just were instrumental for standardization. We were just developing quite a couple of developments that later on were bought by the big ones and just implemented in their product services and so on. So being once the home, doesn't mean if you stick to your point that that will be kept forever. No way, you have to fight for it. And I don't want a discussion here, well, uh, we want to get in the driver's seat again. I, of course, want to be in the driver's seat, but that is just a side. We need to do our efforts and to do our utmost to get back that innovative mindset, that out-of-the-box thinking, and giving opportunities to the business world, and not only for the business world itself, economic growth and jobs and so on, but also for the citizens. And that is even more important. That is your second target, so to say. It is about humans. Now, still being in a position that we are sliding behind, we have a market, and that is cute if you are thinking of that then it, I can't explain it to my neighbor. And as a politician, I'm always trying to use language where I can explain it to my neighbor. And that's more difficult than use all the language that we are used to in our circle, so to say. I can't explain why we have a single market in Europe. That I can explain. It is, it is our crown jewel. It was a great decision at that time in the 50s by our founding fathers. By the way, no founding mothers at that time. They were at home, they were advisors, so to say. But time has changed, and now even in the panel, there are two females and two role models, so to say. So time is changing. But single market, great, a great capital, so to say, but not for the telecom sector. Isn't that crazy? that for the telecom sector, where the technology is not respecting whatever border, and that there is still a fragmented market, that we lack dynamism, that we lack skill, that we do have 28 ring-fenced markets with own regulation, with own legislation. I can't explain it to my neighbor. Again, take that line, if you can't explain it to your neighbor, then there is something rotten in the state, so to say. Um, we have an economy that suffers, so it makes sense. The result of that fragmented market is 
that our networks are slower and less widespread than our international competitors. I'm just mentioning a few. The US, Japan, South Korea have 88% of the world's 4G connections. And Europe, just six. So, a lot to do, and very soon we will come forward, the Commission, with legislative proposals to start changing that. And the sooner, the better. To bring down the barriers so operators find it easier to run services across borders and take those opportunities like you are used to in other parts of the world, for example, in the US. A more consistent legal framework for operating across borders, more consistent products for access to fixed networks and spectrum, goodness gracious, spectrum, more aligned across the continent. What would that be a blessing? Then Europe can enjoy innovative services over fast networks. The boost to GDP could be well over 100 billion per year. Well, if you are mentioning that 1 billion euro per year in such a boost, then why wait? Second, you are discussing policies centered on people. Quite right. I mentioned that already. I want people and businesses to enjoy the best Europe has to offer, wherever they are, without artificial barriers. With more consistent protections and quality of service, with a clear guarantee of net neutrality, one that allows innovative new services to grow. And with a fair deal, ladies and gentlemen, in internet services, transparency and genuine choice, and with fairer prices. After all, a single market should mean seamless service, and that means no more unjustified, unfairly high prices wherever you roam in Europe, and even if your coal crosses an EU internal border. Putting people at the center, and again, great decision of you, Mr. Chair. Putting people at the center isn't just something for politicians. It is also sound business sense. And after all, companies aren't in competition with their customers. Come on. They are related to each other. Both groups benefit if, benefit, if businesses match and meet customer needs. It's win-win. Give people what they need quality services at fair prices, and everyone can win. And that is about making the pie bigger, not fighting over crumbs. And the third thing you need is a strong support for regulators. That strong support from regulators is at stake. A digital society needs the right balance of stability and flexibility, investment and innovation, competition and choice. And the right regulation can definitely deliver the right balance. And equally, regulators can shake up markets, though they can correspond to new digital realities. Help operators adapt to face the future and not sticking to yesterday. Break us out of a vicious circle, one where operators plead for the regulation that supports their outdated business model. Yes, you are listening correctly to my wording, outdated business model, in turn designed to fit outdated regulation. That's over. We shouldn't accept that anymore. And equally, regulators should not be tempted to go too far and over-regulate. Don't think that that is risk avoiding. Just take your sense of reality. Regulation is needed. It should be future oriented and it should fit in new business models. But don't take it for granted that what you did is absolutely the holy grail. It's all the more important at the moment when our priority is not just opening up access to existing networks, but to create new ones, a transition that requires significant investment. And think of all those who are not 
taking part of the blessings of this moment. They are expecting that they can join the party. So let's do our jobs. But let's also give the market its proper responsibility. The market has to do the job too. Responsibility to innovate and progress. And likewise, we should focus not on regulation for its own sake, not on institutions or systems, but on outcomes. And that is the difference between the banking world and us. The bankers were looking at their bonus. You are not looking at the bonus, and thanks heaven, you don't have bonuses. And keep it like that. It is just doing, and of course, a decent salary, but doing your job in a way that is giving opportunities. And I think that we are just buddies in that uh, fight. That we, regulators and the Commission talking about Europe, that we are buddies in that fight, rocking the boat. It is time for change. And likewise, we should not focus on what we did. We should focus on tomorrow. And I don't want to create new super regulators or centralized powers for its own sake. I will be absolutely conforming the rule I'm asking you to do, to do it myself. I want to take pragmatic steps that can deliver the digital Europe we need. Achievable, flexible, and please fast. We are in a hurry. And at stake are the opportunities of a borderless, an open network. I'm very much in favor for an open network and of course taking care of privacy, but an open network is absolutely the best we could get. It is the most important part of internet, so to say. What is at stake? We never ever had it in our history, this type of opportunities. So I think, but only if we think European, again, break out of a vicious circle where ingraining the status quo prevents planning for the future. I absolutely want national regulators who are strong, who are independent, but I also call on you to have the right mentality. Think beyond sectoral interest. Think European and look to the future. And otherwise, those girls and boys that you were mentioning are blaming us. And let's not be in a position where we knew it and we didn't act and then they will blame us. Let's indeed do whatever we can. We can make a change that really delivers for Europe. And that is my dream anyhow. Information and communications technology is essential infrastructure, as important to our economy as transport networks or energy grids. So, telecom regulations are not just for the telecom sector, not at all. They are instrumental for every economic and societal uh, issue. They affect every sector that relies on connectivity for its competitiveness, from industry to healthcare, tourism to television, and more and more. I'm fighting for a framework fit for that digital future, and I invite you to join me, or please invite me to join you. We have to do the job. Thank you. Thank you.